Sac State now has a new head football coach. Andy Thompson takes over for Troy Taylor, who left for the Stanford job. Thompson has been the Hornets' defensive coordinator since 2019. We go live now as Sac State introduces Andy Thompson in his new role. Thank you for being here with this team, and thank you for supporting Hornet Sports. And you know what I have to do now. Yes. Okay. Yes. Sac State is number one because of our coaches <laughs> and our players. Stingers up! I always feel awkward following President Nelson. <laughs> so as we started this, I told Andy yeah. that I'll follow President Nelson not to put him in that spot. But, but thank you, President Nelson. Today's a great day, great day to be a Hornet. Um, I couldn't be more ecstatic uh, to announce Andy as our, our head coach. Four years ago, um, almost four years to today, we ushered in a new era of Hornet football. During that time, I believe we, as we assembled the best FCS coaching staff in the country, the very best. We set high goals to win Big Sky championships, to graduate our student athletes, uh, uh, to uh, a good grade point average, great grade point averages, uh, to advance in the FCS playoffs. We accomplished all of those goals. We also had goals to win national championships. That's still out there. Prior to introducing uh, uh, Andy, I do want to do a few thank yous. First, President Nelson. Uh, this does not happen. This era of Hornet football does not happen without President Nelson. Uh, our vice presidents, our cabinet, we have several of them in attendance here. Uh, they've been tremendous. When you talk about uh, a successful football program, a successful university, a, su a successful coaching staff, student athletes, uh, alignment is critical. And delivering those services to our excellent student athletes is also critical. Uh, working for President Nelson and the leadership of the President's Cabinet uh, has led us that way. When it became clear uh, that we'll be searching uh, for a new head coach, I, uh, I met with President Nelson, met with the staff. I, I, right away, we figured out we have the coach already here. There was no need for a national search. There was no need shaking the bushes all over the place. Our, our head coach was right here. Over the course of the last few days, I met with every single coach here at Sacramento State. In, in our football program, every single one of them. I met with several student athletes. I met with several of our supporters and, and donors um, who are here. And we, we started to get to a place uh, where there is a consensus. Andy's, Andy Thompson's vision, his commitment to student athletes, his commitment to student success uh, matches with what we are as an institution, matches to what we look for as an athletic uh, department. He is a national champion as a student athlete in football. He has been a college uh, coach in, in football for 20 plus years. He has been a Big Sky Conference for 17 years, 14 of them as a coordinator. He has led student athletes. He has done a tremendous job here at Sacramento State, and he's very much prepared for this new opportunity. I'd like to thank uh, Troy Taylor uh, and wish him the best. Troy and I speak regularly. Uh, he has uh, got an unbelievable challenge ahead of him, but I thank him for assembling this great coaching staff, for recruiting uh, these outstanding student athletes, and we're not done. Our goals are still ahead of us. Our goals remain unchanged. With all that said, I ask the Hornet family to join me in congratulating and introducing the 12th head coach of Sacramento State football, Coach Andy Thompson.
Appreciate it. Yep. Wow. Uh, great moment. Um, going to try to hold it all together because I do um, speak to my from my heart, um, and that's something that if I haven't met you, um, you'll know um, hopefully really soon. Um, I'm very humbled to stand up here. I'm excited, and I want to make sure I thank the people that have been such a huge part of my life. At the same time, no one wants to hear everybody talk, so I'm a guy talk for 20 minutes, so I will keep it um, short and, and to the point. Um, first and foremost, thank you, Dr. Nelson. Um, everything he stands for, I love. Um, what he's built with Sac State is unbelievable. Um, love him to stick around. <laughs> just, just keep coming back. Uh, keep going for another year. Love it. Um, Mr. Orr, uh, it's been great working with you every day. He's around. He always pops in. He's always moving. He's, he's, the, he's always working. And I hope um, that I work right alongside him, but work as hard and as, and as thorough, thorough to give these student athletes uh, the experience that they deserve. And uh, you're a great example of that because you're working every day. And it's been, it's been great to start this new um, journey with you. So appreciate that. And then I got to thank my family. Um, McCall and the boys are here. Um, and uh, you guys are going to see them around. If you haven't heard them at the games, they got a lot of signs. Uh, they got to get a few more offensive signs. There have been a lot of defensive signs, but now uh, touchdowns. And, and uh, no, just appreciate all their sacrifice. It's not easy um, being a coach's wife. It's not easy being their dad um, gone a lot to uh, help with the other student athletes, but they've been great, and I really appreciate you guys. Uh, and then I do want to thank Troy Taylor, man. I wouldn't be here if he hadn't given me the opportunity to uh, come four years ago. And man, is this a special place. It's a special place. And I, I, I think, thank him. And I'm going to continue to uh, build and help grow everything that he started here. And that, that leads into the coaches. Um, I couldn't be here without all the coaches that are here. I'd love to name all you guys, but you guys know how much you mean to me. We were just together. We're going to be together a lot. It's unbelievable that you guys would stay here and, and want to be a part of this thing. And I look forward to doing it together. I really do. And I appreciate you guys, all the assistant coaches that are here. And uh, that's the other big thing. We want to keep everybody here. And we think this is a, uh, a great opportunity for us to continue to build on what we started four years ago and elevate it and to continue to be about the student athletes and help them be their very best. And that's the one thing you'll hear me talk about. How can we help these guys be their very best? And hopefully, that's number one, getting their degree and setting them up for life. And I think that's where we, we have to always keep the main thing the main thing. They have to get their degree. Um, and after that, they got to have a great experience. It's no fun to just um, not feel appreciated um, as hard as these guys work. So we're going to make it a great experience, and a great experience comes with winning. And we all want to win, and um, we're going to do everything in our power to get our guys in the right spot, schematically, uh, off the field with their con physical conditioning, um, helping them with whatever, whatever things they're going through. We want to be their life coach. We want to be there for them, um, because that's what they expect when they came to Sac State, is a great experience. Okay, And just what, do you, what can you expect from me? You can expect a guy that wants to have a positive attitude. If you see me and I'm not smiling, usually something's up. I want to I I have a great attitude. And I want my players to have a great attitude. We're lucky to be here. This is, this is, this is such an honor. Um, and so you can expect that. And I want to expect that from our players. Um, they need to be thankful for the opportunity that they have. And then I'm, we're going to work. You know, we have a lot of work to do. And the only way we had any of these things that we've done the last four years was a tremendous amount of work. And we got to do that consistently, but I think it starts with our attitude. If you love what you're doing, if you've got a great attitude, then you're willing to put in a, the work. Um, and then we got to give back to the community. We need to serve this community. Man, Hornet Nation came out like no other this year. It was amazing to see the crowds. And so we need to get in the community, and we need to serve them. And we need to do more community service. And I, I plan on you know, getting our guys out and, and, and meeting you guys that are here, being around the campus more. Uh, and serving the core of helping you um, become successful, you got to learn how to compete. And when you compete, sometimes you do well and sometimes you don't. And you got to pick yourself up and you got to keep going. And that's, that's life, right? 
Uh, life is not always easy, um, and either is competing on a national stage. But guess what? It's going to help you down the road, and we need to teach these guys to compete and do their very best every day. And so we're going to do that, and if we can get that thing, those things done, I think they're going to live a full life after Sacramento State. And that's my goal, and that's why I got into this. My grandfather was a coach. My dad was a coach. And uh, I take a lot of pride in, in being that. So with that being said, before I start getting emotional, <laughs> I'm very excited. And there is a lot of work. I can't wait to work with the players. A lot of them I've already spoke with. We've got to hit the around running with recruiting. There's a lot of guys signing days next week. There's a lot to be done. Um, but it, man, it's going to be a great journey. And I look forward to getting to know all of you guys here. And thank you for this opportunity. And uh, it is a great day to be a Hornet. So that's what I got. We'll open it up to questions from the media right now. We could ask you to raise your hand, and then Jason will bring a microphone to you. And then, uh, go ahead. Joe D. Uh, Andy, Legend. Joe Davidson, Sacramento B. Uh, talk about Chris Richardson and Bobby Fresco, what their role is going to be, why it was so important that you guys stayed together, and, and, um, and why that was such a, a priority. Well, offense is a huge, huge thing, and we've scored a lot of points, and those guys have been a huge part of it. So Coach Fresco is going to be the offensive coordinator. He's going to call the plays. He's going to work with the quarterbacks, and uh, everybody's excited to see him get that opportunity. My right-hand man is Coach Richardson. He's going to be the assistant head coach. Uh, we love working together. He's got so much experience. He's been a head coach. He's won state championships. He knows everybody uh, in this area. All the high school coaches respect him. You walk into a high school with Coach Richardson, and it's, hey, how are you doing? How can we help? And so could not do it without those guys. Um, you know, on the defensive side of the ball, Craig Polson, um, Cherokee Valeria are going to stay, Coach Whitfield staying, um, and all those guys are going to be huge things. Jeremy LaPan is our special teams coordinator. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a group effort. Um, again, all the guys um, externally that help, Garrett is a huge part of it. Coach Perry doing the stuff he does with, with recruiting. So just, just the fact that we can have that many names and, and keep the continuity and keep the kids, the kids, that's a lot of anxiety when you lose your coach. I went through it three times as a player. I was three head coaches, played for five position coaches. I know what that feels like. And the fact that we can keep continuity within the program with excellent coaches, I'm very excited to, to have all those guys stay in. Did you have any discussions with Troy Taylor about was he trying to recruit you to his staff at all? Or was there any discussion there with him about going to Stanford? Uh, you know, Coach Taylor has been great to me. And um, you know, I don't really want to get into all the, those conversations. Um, those are kind of between he and I. I, I respect him a ton. Um, he wants the best for all of his coaches. And uh, he, he was very excited when I called and told him that I was going to be the next head coach here. So he's been nothing but supportive of me. And those guys that did go and, and go there, I, I have nothing but great memories with them. I'm going to be friends with those guys for life. What we did the last three years together with that unit can never be taken away. And, um, and Coach Taylor has been great to me. So. Hi, Coach. Congrats. Hi. Uh, talked about the players. What was the reaction like when you talked when you told them that you're going to be the head coach? And just share like maybe what they their sense of relief or their excitement. They're excited. You know, they've they've we feel like we have unfinished business. You know, there's anytime you lose the last football game of the season, it's not a great feeling. Um, and so they they they're ready to work. They're ready to go. They're excited about again a lot of the coaches that they're going to be familiar with are staying. Um, at the same time, you know, they're 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 giving me some hard time about being the head coach now. So um, just I met with a lot of them. And, hey, you're looking a little bit better with your tie on there, coach. So um, no, it's a fun group. We got a lot of great kids. Um, we want to continue to recruit this area with kids that are from Northern California. I didn't get a chance to hit on that. But it's so special for these kids that are so close to home to um, show what they can do uh, on a national stage. And we want to get back to that. And uh, again, you can't, can't do anything without working. So it's a day-to-day -day process. And uh, those guys all know it, and they're, they're ready to get going again. So um, it was exciting to, to be able to, to see them and, and, and talk with them. Coach, all of your players throughout this year talked about how much fun they had 
in this program and just how strong and steady the culture was. How do you balance maintaining the culture as is, but also introducing some of your own flavor to uh, the head coaching role and, and yeah. to the, the program itself? Got to be me. I got to be me. Um, and uh, I say that not with an ego. Um, I'm different as far as, you know, other coaches, and, and I got to make sure that I'm genuine and that they can feel my passion and they can feel my excitement for them. And my job is to help all of them now. I'm not just on the defensive side of the ball. Um, uh, I got I to gotta make sure that I reach all the offensive guys and the defensive guys and the special teams. And to do that, they got to know that I believe in them. So I've been meeting with them one on one, and that starts with that because you got to build a relationship one on one. And if everybody feels good about their role and understands their role, then they'll go attack it. So my job is, is gotten bigger that way, and I look forward to the change. Um, I still am going to be involved in the defense. I, I, I have a passion for that, and I think there's enough hours in the days that you can do both. So um, again, we got great offensive guys, so they don't need me over there telling them plays. They got plenty of plays. Um, but maybe a you know, pat on the butt from the offensive lineman, hey, from a different person, or you know, telling the receiver, hey, great catch, doing those things. Um, I'm interested in helping everybody with that. Um, Jack Freeman, State Hornet. Wanted to ask you a little bit about how would you describe your coaching style? <laughs> Uh, I would say direct with compassion. Uh, if any of you guys have watched me coach, um, those guys know the expectation, um, but they also know there's some compassion behind it. I did. I got a chance to play. I was in their shoes. I know um, what they're feeling and how they're doing it. And uh, my whole job is to build their confidence up so that they can play as best they can on game day. So you need direction, right? You got to be able to say, hey, this is what we're going to do in this situation. But then you got to be able to pick them up when it doesn't quite happen all the time. So I would hope they would say that. And I would hopefully they would say consistent. You know, uh, consistent is a big, big thing with, with young people, or with everybody, I guess. Um, you got to be there every day. And you got to be there when the good times are happening and the bad times. And you got to be consistent with your message. You can't be switching things all the time. And you got to make, help them grow that way. So I would hope those things. Coach, have you, t have you thought about what's going to be like to be coaching a game from the sidelines rather than up in the booth? You know, I'm actually, I was actually down. Oh, yeah, I was a good guy going everywhere, moving around a little bit. Yeah. It's all right. No, I, the booth sounded always really like, man, it'd be calm up there. You know, <laughs> nice. Bobby always told me, it's man, it's 72 degrees up there when we were in Weber. <laughs> uh, but no, um, I'll, I'll be down the sidelines, and I'll be excited to, to uh, encourage those guys down there. A question for Mark. Um, you mentioned National Signing Day being less than a week. Away. How important was it to get a coach in, a head coach in, super quickly to, to try and not lose any momentum on the recruiting trail? Uh, it, it was critical, um, but not so much for recruiting. Our, our student athletes needed direction, mm -hmm. our current student athletes, and our current uh, coaching staff, and our Hornet community. Um, and I, as I said in, in my statement, I couldn't be more appreciative of, of President Nelson and an office that doesn't get a lot of uh, probably thank yous, our human resources office. Yes. Sac State. Um, you know, they, uh, <laughs> you, you laugh, I mean, it, it, in all seriousness, um, it was critical that we get some answers back to our student athletes, to our staff, um, certainly to recruiting. Um, that, uh, and we're decisive about it. And there was no doubt um, that we wanted to keep this going. Um, my, my toughest job in the, in the last few days have been identifying who, who we're gonna hand the key, keys to, but there was never a doubt uh, that, um, that we, would, uh, we would go internal. All right, so no more questions, we'll open it up for, oh, sorry, one more, sorry. One more, uh, Andy, um, can you talk about and describe your mood? You went from being pretty down on late Friday night uh, with that great quarterback from Incarnate Word to a matter of days later, uh, euphoria. That's just, it's a, I guess it's typical of college sometimes, but the, the whole ringer of emotions. Yeah, I'm, I'm human for sure. Um, and I did go through those emotions. And I would, I would uh, tell you that it, it was not easy. Um, anytime you, you end a, a season with a loss in, in a playoff, 
it's just like boom. It's the seniors are, are no longer you get to see those guys, and it, it just hits you, and it hits you right all the way down to your core. And I was, I was, I was, I was, I was hurting on that. Um, but like anything else, like we just talked about, you got to get back up and you got to go, and uh, and you got to you got to figure out what's the best thing for your family, and you got to figure out what's best for the program. And um, I'm very confident that I've I've worked really hard for this opportunity. And uh, I want to be there for everybody that's a part of the program. And so you can't, you can't sit there and, and feel sorry for yourself. You've got to get up and you've got to go. And uh, I wish there was a better um, outcome from that game. Um, but it's, it's time to move forward. And you can't spend a bunch of time if you win in the past or if you lose. It's, it's moving forward. And we've got to do that as a program. And we're going to do that consistently. We've got a meeting about recruiting after this. And we're going to go back and we're going to watch some tape on some recruits. And we've got to keep this thing um, going in the right direction. But definitely, Joe, I am human. And uh, it, was, it, was a tough, it was a tough 48 hours there um, with the whole situation. All right. Thank you, guys. We'll open it up for one-on-one. -on -one. If you need assistance, ask myself. Thank you for coming. Brian Bjork to help. Unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you.